Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video. I think it's time we talked about EVgo. And so so here's the thing. There's a lot of news that's come out about EVgo. Recently they had their IPO, they purchased Recargo or PlugShare, right? Um, so they've been pretty active. And then of course the, the whole uh, effort with GM who's funding about 600 it looks like, uh, charging sites across the country uh, with 100 kilowatt and 350 kilowatt chargers. So there's a lot of big news uh, circulating about EVgo. But uh, I'll be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. Uh, I got news about a week ago of a change in their pricing. Now, the fact that I'm just now getting to this because there's a lot I have going on in my life, I'm behind, uh, you know, I'm reporting on this basically a week after the news came out and yet somehow or another, all of these EV focused news media sites that were constantly blasting EVgo for their pricing structure I haven't seen a single story from them posted on it. I saw one small story from a small YouTube channel where someone was commenting on it, but I haven't seen anything from the major news outlets. So it's one thing and major, right? Major EV news outlets. But it's it's one thing to be critical of a company, um, but then to never counterbalance that with any sort of positive press at all, it makes me question your motivations, right? It makes me question your your... Um, where you're coming from uh, as, as a media site. So enough about that. The, the news is EVgo is switching over to a per kilowatt hour pricing model. This is something people have been asking for a very, very long time. Uh, it sort of evens the playing field in terms of how much people are paying uh, for electricity. Now, I, I won't go into, you know, a lot of people argue that, oh, just charging DC fast charging is too expensive. I disagree. It's charging as a service, not just uh, charging to add power, right? You're not consuming electricity like you are at home. You're paying for a service. So I completely understand having significantly higher uh, costs, right, if you're using DC fast charging. Still, there's something of an established standard at this point for how much uh, people should be paying for, uh, you know, power when they're away from home, at least DC fast charging. And right now that price does seem to uh, balance somewhere around 30 cents a kilowatt hour, maybe as little as 20 to 25 cents, maybe as much as 35 or possibly even 40 cents per kilowatt hour for the more expensive options. Now, uh, the reason this is even more important for EVgo is EVgo has a, a wide variety of chargers, right? They, in terms of charging speed in particular, and so uh, you, you can have 100 amp charging speeds, you can have uh, 125, 150, 200 amp, um, all the way up to their fastest 350 kilowatt uh, chargers that, the, that they now have on offer. And so, you know, just to give you an idea, right, because one of the, I think, valid criticisms of EVgo is some people were paying as much as 50 cents per kilowatt hour or 60 cents per kilowatt hour uh, because they were paying these extremely high per minute fees that maybe were appropriate if you're charging at 150 kilowatts, but they were on those 100 amp, essentially 40 kilowatt chargers. And that's just not acceptable, right? You can't have that sort of variation. And it, and it looks even worse, right, when you consider a charging site like EVgo Baker. Well, EVgo Baker has 50 kilowatt, 150 kilowatt, and 350 kilowatt chargers on site. And so, in theory, uh, VW eGolf, uh, Ford Mustang Mach-E, and a Porsche Taycan can all pull, pull into that charger on the same day charging and the e-golf owner will pay 45 to 55 cents per kilowatt hour. Uh, the Mustang Mach-E owner will be paying about 20 cents per kilowatt hour. And the Porsche Taycan owner might be paying as, as little as 5 to 10 cents uh, per kilowatt hour. All at the same charger, same location, same region. The only difference is 
uh, the output speeds of the various chargers and the vehicles charging. So um, I think this is going to be a really huge step forward. Looking at the pricing model that EVgo um, has posted, right, that they've given members access to. For the greater California area, it looks like members are going to be paying uh, only 30 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, again, I'm not, um, you know, 100% positive on EVgo in this because I, th I think if you're also going to have a monthly membership fee, um, and especially if you're going to have session fees, things like that, I think their per kilowatt hour rate is still too high, right? Compare that to something... Um, like a Tesla uh, supercharger where they're maybe paying 28 to 30 cents per kilowatt hour, but there are no membership fees, right? There's no session fees for initiating a charge. Um, so the effective rate per kilowatt hour actually is that say 26 to 28 to 30 kilo, uh, cents per kilowatt hour. Whereas the eff effective rate for EVgo, well, it will depend on how much you charge, but to offset that $6.99 monthly fee, you'd have to be doing a number of sessions uh, to, to bring it back down close to that um, 30 cents per kilowatt hour, uh, which is basically in line with uh, you know, Electrify America's uh, 31 cents per kilowatt hour, but Electrify America has a $4 uh, per month uh, membership fee. So I think uh, EVgo still needs to maybe work on their pricing a little bit, balancing it out, but this is a huge step uh, in the right direction. I mean, I've been a huge fan of EVgo for a while now. Um, I, I own some of their shares at this point, but that's mostly just to monitor them in the market. Um, I don't you know, necessarily think that they're the best investment in the EV uh, public charging provider uh, space. And maybe if, if some of you are interested in that, I might explain exactly why. Um, but, you know, I'm holding a small stake just to, to monitor them within the market. Uh, but I do think that they're a good uh, charging provider with some improvements that they need to make, right? I mean, because maybe I have a soft spot, but some of my earliest 1,000, 1,100, 1,200 mile uh, trips in the Chevrolet Bolt EV were done on the back of the EVgo network. Maybe I used a few charge point, uh, 20, 24 kilowatt chargers here or there just to test out to make sure they, they worked to validate them. Uh, but in large part, uh, a bulk of my early driving, probably the first 50 uh, to 60,000 miles on my Chevrolet Bolt EV, the long distance driving was done on the back of EVgo and EVgo's charging network. Their sites are located in great places. Um, a lot of times they're easy to access. We've seen uh, both Tesla and uh, Electrify America mirror a lot of their locations uh, near where EVgo already had chargers. Their locations, and frankly, are top notch, right? Like, like I said, in 2017, early 2017, I was able to drive to Zion National Park from Southern California on the back of EVgo's charging network. So um, I think people are maybe overly harsh of EVgo in that regard, but at the same time, they still have a lot of improvements that they need to make, right? They, you, you can travel in certain areas very easily with them, but there are wide swaths of the United States that have no EVgo coverage whatsoever. Uh, they haven't committed to any sort of interstate travel corridors outside of, again, key regions. Um, so they have a lot of growth opportunities there. They have a lot of reasons um, that they need to improve. Uh, and, you know, the their pricing model exacerbated the differences in their charging speeds from location to location. Um, but I don't think that was the those charging speeds were issues all on their own. Again, EVgo needs to address that. Um, I do like what they're doing though, in sense of like what they're doing with uh, uh, GM, right? In partnership with GM, where they're putting 100 kilowatt and 350 kilowatt chargers at the same uh, site, right? Co-locating these uh, different uh, charging speed chargers makes a lot of sense because it gives people options uh, to match the charging speed to their expectations for the stop or the needs of their vehicle. Uh, but the problem is they have 
EVgo still has too many sites where they're only the 100 amp 40 kilowatt chargers or maybe the 125 amp uh, 50 kilowatt chargers when vehicles that are coming out today they need a whole lot more in the way of the 150 to 350 kilowatt chargers uh, and like I said GM is, is building uh, over 600 sites for them in the next three to four years so that's going to be a big benefit hopefully Nissan with the Nissan Aria uh, coming out um, they're going to push for that too and I don't know maybe BMW they're still one of those companies that's sort of undecided I'd maybe like to see them team up um, on the EVgo network and say hey look they've supported us before with the i3 uh, and, and we're gonna start to, to fund some of their chargers too uh, because frankly Electrify America is becoming a little bit scary for me uh, it's starting to look a lot like the Tesla supercharger network where there are so many EV owners with free charging, free membership, free access. In cities, Electrify America is already starting to be a no-go zone for me. Um, but uh, you know, outside on on the highway, there's still a usable travel network, and really there aren't a whole lot of other options uh, for the public charging infrastructure. But Ford Mustang Mach-E owners with a free 250 kilowatt hour of energy, and VW ID4 owners with completely free charging uh, starting to use the Electrify America network like Tesla owners were using and using maybe a euphemism abusing possibly the supercharger network it means that for those of us who aren't in those groups right we're not in the in crowd we might need to start looking to other charging providers so right now though at least nationally uh, the only other major players are ChargePoint and EVgo and EVgo like I said this this uh, per kilowatt hour uh, fee structure is a step in the right direction um, they need to expand some of their sites um, make faster charging at some of them uh, work on some of the the access issues a lot of their charging sites do have full pull through parking but not all of them um, but like I said getting more funding from Nissan from GM from BMW if representatives from BMW GM and Nissan are listening why don't the three of you work with EVgo and plan out, I don't know, 500, 600 sites that are specifically travel-oriented sites? Um, look at what Electrify America did in Baker. Look at what EVgo did in Baker um, and, and see if the three of you big players, right, can work with EVgo to build out six charger 350 kilowatt charger sites along freeway corridors bridging gaps between cities um, it might it might make EV go the other viable uh, travel option for um, basically EV owners GM EV owners and Nissan EV owners and BMW EV owners so um, anyway I'd like to hear what you think I know I went on a little bit of a tirade a little bit of a rant here but I feel like EVgo is one of the companies that's getting the least coverage even though they're possibly doing the most in terms of the public charging space um, and I don't think that's fair and I don't think it's realistic and I think it's setting the wrong expectations for a lot of um, prospective EV owners or new EV owners who are only being basically given the keys to the the network that their you know respective automaker wants them to use whether that's the supercharger network or um, you know the Electrify America network so I'd love to hear what you think I know um, some people have said EVgo's reliability on the East Coast hasn't been the greatest again that's something EVgo needs to work on uh, hopefully improve with better chargers from BTC power um, and other providers um, and yeah I'd love to hear what you think what have your experiences been with EVgo uh, are you sort of on board with them now transitioning over to this per uh, kilowatt hour uh, charging model is this what you wanted to see from them um, you know what do you think of the lack of coverage you know come you know news sites that are blasting EVgo when they're a per minute charging site but not celebrating the transition um, like I said it's coming September 16th it's just over uh, two weeks away from now that uh, you're going to transition over to a per kilowatt hour um, fee structure. So anyway, I'd love to hear what you think. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out the channel and uh, 
Thank you for watching.